Yeah, Jonathan, go ahead. I appreciate it. Yeah, so just um, I'm grateful that you reinforce, Zach, and you, you know, you reinforce that it's all personal. Sometimes, and I think this is my mistake, I try to separate it and try to live multiple lives, but no, no it's, it's one life. So mm -hmm. I appreciate the emphasis on that. Thank you. Most definitely. Love it. Uh, next up, Dan. Yeah, I thought the time was fantastic uh, to get the perspective from you and from also from Zach. Um, had a lot of challenges. This is a little bit more than I anticipated, to be honest with you. You know, you go through QLS like, hey, this ought to be easy peasy until you get in the trenches. And what I've learned is you, you coaches have made it, you know, can, there have been times, you know, you've really questioned, you know, is this really going to be a good fit or not? And then uh, I've been working with Rusty and Rick been great and then attending of course the qls was awesome so it's just having the team and i've never had that as much of a team support before so i think it's we realize it's all possible we just have to you know focus on the best way to do it and how to filter a lot of the negative out of the challenges we have from day to day and persevere you know just long enough to make it all happen and i think with laying these things out taking the time to think about it putting together is very beneficial so thank you most oh, definitely, Dan. Thank you. Yeah, consistency. That's one of the things that I brought up with Zach earlier today in our conversation. I mean, we do want to, I mean, small bites, right? I mean, we look at it as, you know, we always get overwhelmed by the end goal. But if we break it down, like I said, on a granular level and take those small bites day in and day out, you're going to look at, down the road four to six months. And you're going to see how far you've come and how much progress you've made. Um, so break it down, make it simple, stay consistent. And nothing goes to waste that you do, right? Every minute that you put into this business or into anything that you do, right? Uh, it's going to advance you to that next stage, right? Jessica. Um, I was just going to say it came at a really good time too. I've been uh, like really struggling lately with my mindset. And I don't think that I feel like burned out, but... I'm just like constantly doubting myself and like getting anxious when I'm like going to make my dials and I just don't know why. So I like the, what he talked about at the beginning of doing something like for an hour, like right now I'm walking and I love walking and being outside, but sometimes life just gets so busy that you forget to take care of yourself. So uh, it was just a good reminder to make sure you're taking care of yourself. So that way you can put yourself into the business and continue and moving forward yes i love that exercise actually that i mean taking mindset is everything right and if you're off just a little bit it could throw off your whole day your whole week you know and uh jessica you're doing great so far uh keep up the pace and the consistency and definitely make time for yourself if you can just to you know think about something else don't put so much stress on yourself so much pressure the chips will fall into place Good job. Zach. Yeah, I'm going to feed off what she said, you know, just how simple it is, you know, 20% of your day, you know, you just think about when you get involved with this, the grind, you know, you just got to grind and grind and grind and grind. You totally forget about, you know, everything else. And, you know, you can potentially be burnt out in the end and just taking that, you know, hour a day or even 20, 30 minutes, you know, to just recharge and kind of clear your mind and, get in a different uh, mindset and, and, you know, your dials are going to turn out better than if you're in a bad mindset and just trying to funnel through them that day. So I, I like that. That was a good perspective. Yeah. yeah. And just remember uh, you don't have to do that whole hour, <clears throat> two hours in a day at one time, right? Spread it out. Give yourself some breathing room in between, you know, the tasks and the time blocks that you have. Um, I've done that recently, do 30 minutes here, kind of just focus on something else, uh, you know, relax a little bit, get back, get energized and hit the ground running again. Right. It makes a big difference throughout your day. Kenny. Yeah. So kind of the piggyback off what Jessica and, uh, Zach said was just, you know, the mindset. Uh, something my grandmother used to say growing up was, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. So I've listened to a lot of books, read a lot of books, watched a lot of TED Talks, and it all comes down to mindset. I'm very fortunate to be a part of the community. 
I know that our mindset overall is strong. And so any doubts or questions I have, I bring to my group. I always get a good answer or, I, you know, I get a lot of critiques and feedback as to what I could do better. Uh, so, yeah, I was happy that I attended and uh, thank you guys for having us. And I look forward to what's to come. Awesome. Thank you, Kenny, for being here. Appreciate the comments. Yeah, a positive mindset can move mountains. I mean, it, it most definitely can. It can change your whole outcome. Adji. Um, yeah, I just wanted to thank everyone. Thank Zach about, you know, uh, it's a pleasure being in this uh, group. And I just wanted to, you know, just wanted to keep moving forward. And I just wanted to focus on uh, my why. You know, I just got to make sure I'm hitting the target. Consistency is key. And I have to re remember that real estate is a team sport. It's not an individual sport, right? So uh, if you have the right team around you, you just got to um, focus on what you're good at and you got to know your limitations and just got to uh, focus on why I want to keep doing this. So uh, positive mindset is key. Again, I'm just piggyback, piggybacking on everyone's thoughts on this one. So, uh, yeah, you know, 2024 is going to be a great year, I hope. Yeah, yes, definitely. Tons of opportunity out there. Uh, a team does help in many ways, right? And a great part about uh, Smart Real Estate Coach, you have us behind you, right? You have a team behind you. No matter what coach it is, we're all here to help. You know, if I don't have an answer to something, I know who to go to to get it, right? We're all going to lean on each other. You know, that's why I love doing three-way calls with, with all the emerging students because if you bring us to the bring me to the call, it shows that you have a team behind you, right? It gives you that confidence, it gives the seller that confidence that it's just not a one man show, right? And that goes a long way. Even if there's not much that I need to answer on the call, just being on there, giving you a backup, right? Uh, goes a long way. And like I said, if we don't have the answers, we know how to get it. There's enough of us in here to support each other. And that's the beauty of the community. Good job, uh, Avi. Yeah, so I have a few things. One is that this annual review is is a great reset for me. Um, I kind of realized what I didn't accomplish that I wanted to, but the flip side is I see how much progress I've made from last year and where I am. And and what he was talking about, trying to incorporate 20% of your day and things that you love. I realized I already do a good chunk of that. I, I'm going to add more but I need to be more present when I'm doing it to be more engaged in that aspect. When I'm working, I got to be working. When I'm with the family, I got to be with the family and not distracted with work things. Mm -hmm. Very good point. I mean, it goes back to time blocking too, whether, whether it's for work or for leisure or for just something that you love to do, that time blocking is very important to be focused during that time block, right? On whatever it is. Uh, so that's why if you do plan parts of your day to focus on something that you love, whether it's watching sports or, you know, working out or whatever it may be, be 100% present for that task during that time. And you will be a lot more productive. I can guarantee that. And a lot less stress, right? Upon completing certain tasks. Good job, Avi. And I could definitely assure you that I've been almost every step of the way with you, Avi. You've made some big strides this last year. Can't wait to see your 2024. You're going to do great. Job. Thank you. I also can't wait. All right, Michael Zucker. Yeah, takeaway-wise, I feel like uh, my focus is kind of swayed, especially when I'm when I'm dialing. It's, it's, I think it's probably on the mindset, but... Mm -hmm. um, you know, going back and redoing, or for me, redoing, going back to core values, um, the how, like that was really good to kind of recenter myself and make sure that um, when I'm going into these calls that I'm doing it in the way that, um, you know, that I want, that that really shows that it's my business and, you know, how I can do things the right way or what I think is the right way versus, you know, people who are out there doing it, you know, not the right way. In my opinion. 
Sure, those so are very just, important. Yeah, sticking to your core values. There, there are quite a few deals that I've walked away from that I could have sucked up and just did the deal, uh, but didn't just because I knew it was going to be a headache with the seller, right? Even though they more than likely wanted to go forward with me. I mean, the beginning stages of dealing with the seller are going to be the honeymoon stages, right? It's going to be the, the best stage and it's only going to get worse from there over time. I, it can't get better, right? Because they're going to want to get cashed out eventually. And, and you want them to be on the same page with you, almost kind of like working in tandem as a team uh, that you're working together towards a common goal for their property. You're not working against them. And as long as they understand that, um, it should make the, the deal and the transaction go a lot smoother and the way it's supposed to be, right? Good job. Thank you, Michael. Steve, you're on mute there. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, no, uh, everything that I heard today is uh, motivating, you know, and I like the core values, uh, being reminded of some of these things. And uh, looking back in hindsight, is uh, I'm goal oriented, but I've been kind of setting the goals in my mind and not writing them down. And that really resonated today. That uh, that seems to be what uh, keeps me moving forward is having those goals. And as I uh, heard this today, I realized that I've set the goals in my mind, but I'm not writing them down. And it just doesn't seem to work without writing them down. So yeah, I'm very uh, appreciative of everything that uh, everybody shared today. I've heard some really good things, you know, win-win situations, um, you know, among other things. Yeah. So, uh, and making the most of the time, uh, that's resonated. Uh, you know, yeah. when I do have time that's available to make the most of it and not get distracted with other things, but time is essential, you know, focus, focus. Yeah. Clarity on the goals. Thank you, Steve. All the great points. Clarity on your goals. A good point that Zach made was, okay, yeah, your, your task today or this week is to do 100 dials, and but what's the ultimate goal? It was five leads, right? Okay, what if you got five leads and 10 dials? You're a lot more productive, right? So that's why I don't like dials overall as a goal. I mean, yeah, in the beginning, it's great to get the dials out there, getting the rhythm and doing all that. Uh, let's become more efficient, right? Let's become more effective in every task that we do. Uh, that way you can progress faster and not burn out. We don't want you to burn out, right? Good job. Anybody else? Final comments? You know, Mike, I'd like to just comment on that a second because I was getting in that mode because mm -hmm. I was shooting for dials and I wasn't getting the numbers that I wanted. So I felt like I wasn't being successful, wasn't reaching my goals. I was mm -hmm. like, you know, questioning myself and so on. And what has happened is, now I have a lot of leads that I'm working with right now. So my time and energy is going on there. And so that to me is, you know, once again, it's more focused focus on the leads than the dials. So that was a concern. I'm going like, can I talk with my coach about it? I'm like, okay, you know, I'm not into these numbers, but I'm getting more live people that I'm talking to. I'm getting things going, working through those processes. So at one point I didn't feel like it was, you know, I didn't even want to be posting my numbers, to be honest with you, because I said, these are just depressing. Sure. But so I realized, no, it's just as I talk to more people, that's really the goal of this. Not that I dialed 200 dials this week, but I talked to five, 10 potential sellers. So had to change my mindset on that a little bit. Very good. Yeah, we can only critique ourselves off of what we could control, right? I mean, you can't control people picking up their phones. You can't control how many dials you make. You can, right? Uh, but ultimately, what's the what's the goal that you're trying to get to? live calls, uh, leads, takens, appointments. Sometimes if I need to just get out there and get things going, I just almost, I don't want to say force an appointment, but I'll prematurely go on an appointment just to get out there, get the get everything rolling, get the mindset rolling, just that something positive is happening, right? Because we all get in those ruts, right? Where nothing's going our way. And um, just trying to create and get change the mindset, keep the consistency going, and keep your foot on the pedal. Um, things will eventually turn in your way. And like you're saying right now, you have tons of leads, right? That you're working on, right? More than likely is because you stayed consistent. I don't think you dropped off and a bunch of leads fell on your lap. I don't think that's what happened, right? I'm sure you stuck with the plan. You continue to make your dials. 
and and you started getting a reward for it in, in return. Good job. Thank you for that comment. Um, Kristen. Uh, at the beginning of today, um, I my focus was uh, my mindset, goals, vision, and business plan. And I, I'm really thankful because uh, this session hit on all those things and gave me better direction and details to kind of hone in on doing all of that. Mm -hmm. So thank you. <laughs> Most definitely. You're welcome. Yes. And then getting together with Steve and writing your goals down uh, so you could visually look at them, you know, every so often to look at what you're shooting for, right? Your why, how you're going to do it. And then, like I said, getting granular, breaking it down to the day and what you need to accomplish will give you a clear vision and um, definitely increase your chances of hitting your goal. I'm not sure what the stat is. There's some something floating around, around, I'm sure, online of the difference of writing your goals down and not, right? Just thinking about goals and then writing them down. How much of an increase in percentage uh, it is that, that you do hit your goals if, if you write them down. I'm sure it's a big jump. Vision yep. board, right? I definitely have to get better at that. <laughs> yes. Doug, I think you were trying to speak, weren't you? I didn't see your hand go up, but I know you're speaking up there. Uh, thank you, Mike. Just a couple reflections. Um, you know, the invitation of this community is to step into the river of change. Uh, not just starting a business, but with all the kind of attendant personal growth that just comes along with it if you're kind of your heart and your mind is open to it all. And uh, I feel like I've, in the last couple of months, uh, I've been working on some difficult personal things, but that's all been a gift because of taking on the goals and the missions of of this kind of new thing for me. And uh, that's just been, uh, you know, on the surface difficult, but to be realistic, there are issues and misunderstandings I probably had my whole life. So it's, it's like very rewarding to like be pushed to look at all that and, uh, you know, learn to approach it with a spirit of creativity and uh and not you know negative self-talk uh the other p the other piece is uh i've been reflecting on um you know we touched on it earlier in the conversation about how you approach let's say talking with someone on the phone and you know let's say you're uh negatively anticipating making dials and you approach calls with kind of you know you want to take action like we all talk about but let's say your action is more has a tone of like grit rather than inspiration and you're pushing like we we're talking to get the number instead of to communicate with the person on the other side and uh so that, that's been an edge i've been trying to learn about is how can I get myself in the chair properly and in the mindset properly uh, instead of being, you know, top kind of too, uh, too, too above the situation, like too worried about the numbers or what's not happening instead of being present on the call. Uh, so I, I feel like the massive action piece, the not all action is effective and i've been trying to dial in on the difference between the two sure yeah doug i mean that's one of the things i always talk about is you know you're you're making a call to a seller and just having the conversation with them to see if 
what you have to offer is of help to them, right? You're looking to help somebody. And going into the conversation or into the call with that mindset, you know, removes all of that doubt, right? Takes away that that nervousness that you may have in the beginning, getting back into the groove, right? And you're just looking to talk to them to see if they're a possible fit. If not, move on to the next number, right? We're not here to sell them on anything. We're here to show them the creative ways of selling their property that if they just have time on their side, it could be a great fit for them and it can help them maximize the value in their property. Or it could potentially save them for, you know, the, the negative position that they're in, right? You could potentially get them out of it and put them on the right track. So going into it with that thought process should allow you not to be pressured to make any type of decisions. You're not making a decision on that first call, right? You're not signing a contract and, and locking yourself into anything just yet, right? You're, you're there just to see if they're open to the idea and if their situation is a fit for you and the seller, that's all. And if you can get to that, just that ba those basics on that first call and just continue to hammer that in, it's gonna become second nature to you in all your first calls. And then from there, you're just gonna keep building upon it um, and, and get into the more of the technicality of, you know, writing up the terms, putting together the offers, you know, uh, things of that nature. But we're gonna be here to help you along the way. So I know you gotta get back into the groove, but have that mindset, okay? Have the mindset of just going in to see if that person's a fit and that you're looking to help more than anything. Job. Okay, we got seven minutes back, or not back, but we have seven minutes left in the call. Does anybody have anything they would like to go over? Oh, Tim, you had your hand up. Go ahead. I'd just like to say, well, um, I like the part where you get the 20% in where your heart things that you like to do because I get, you know, I have mindset problems of staying focused. So I think that helped out a lot. And we really need to I really need to stay focused and concentrate on doing follow-ups because I don't get many uh I don't get many of live live calls. So mm -hmm. uh I have to concentrate on follow-ups. And so it's kind of changed my numbers a little bit, but I'm I'm really working hard to try to increase that. And I, that's kind of what I got from a lot of from what Zach said. Is uh, maintaining that focus and and goals and being effective while you're doing it. So, yeah, I mean, going back to Zach's statement, do what you love for 20 minutes a day. It's going to change your perspective of the day, right? It's going to change your energy going into, you know, the tough parts of the day, right? You're going to go in there with more focus, more of a drive uh, to tackle uh, what's at hand, right? Great point there, Tim. Thank you. Any other questions? I am going to post that uh, once I get back to my other computer. Um, I don't have it on this. This is a another computer that I'm using on using right now, but I need to get on my desktop. That's probably where I have the file. Regardless, I'll get something posted on the channel for you guys to go off of to start working on for your 2024 uh, plan. Um, hopefully, you can get those back to me in the next. I would say 45 days or so. And then we'll set up one-on-one -on -one calls uh, with, with each of you to go over it uh, individually and, and get more uh, deeper into the, uh, into your plan. Okay.